Let's talk a little bit about why the singular value decomposition is so important. There are actually lots of uses to it, but for this video I want to focus on one particular one, which is compression. Let's suppose we had a huge matrix that was something, say, 100 by 100. So obviously that would take 100 times 100, we'd have to have 10,000 values stored to store that matrix. Now, for just doing a singular value decomposition, it's actually going to take more storage because if we have our USV transpose, the U is going to be another 100 by 100 matrix. The V transpose would be a 100 by 100 matrix. So we're actually going to take twice as many entries for those S is technically a 100 by 100 matrix, but because it's going to be just entries on the diagonal, we we'll really only have 100 entries we need to store. So this would be 2 times 10,000 plus another 100 for 20,100. Obviously not compressed. We're taking more than twice as much data to store that. But the important thing is this S. Remember that when we've been setting up these singular value decompositions, we've been arranging the S so that the largest singular values are up in the top left, and they get smaller as we go down the diagonal. What this means in terms of recreating the matrix, the higher up in this thing they are, the more important they are to the integrity of the matrix. The more impact they have on what the values are, the higher up they are in this thing. And for many applications, it's very common that you have a pretty wide disparity in what these things are. So let's say, for example, that we only need, and this is something that it depends on your application, but let's say that we only need the first 10 values to get a reasonable approximation of what the matrix is. The first 10 singular values are enough to get the general idea of what the matrix is. If that's the case, then what can we do? Rather than having 100 by 100, 100 by 100, and 100, well, so let's start with the S. We're taking only the top 10 values. So my S is going to be a 10 by 10 matrix. And again, we're really only storing the 10 values because we're only storing the diagonal elements. So what does the U have to be? Well, because we are still trying to get our original matrix back, or at least an approximation to it, the U, we're going to end up taking the first 10 columns. So my U, and we'll call it U bar for the part of it that we care, we're taking the first 10 columns. So we're going to end up with here a 100 by 10 matrix. Similarly, the V transpose will take the first 10 rows we're going to take a 10 by 100 matrix. So all of a sudden, what we have is we have two 1,000 entry things plus the 10 entries, meaning we've got 2,010 entries we need to store, approximately one-fifth the size of what we took at the beginning.
again, it all depends on the application. It all depends on how close to the original matrix we need to be. But it's very common that something like this, those 10 entries, that one-fifth the amount of data, is going to be a very good approximation in many circumstances.